Now, this picture goes back to about 1912. I'm standing in that same spot. Here where we see this shop here is where that enclosed walkway goes across today. Now it's Tidkey days. Here was the 1910 Tidkey store. Tidkeys were an amazing, it was an amazing operation. Tidkeys started in 1894 and they were actually three blocks south of where they were here. Two brothers, two brothers, Charlie and Ernest Tidkey. Ernest had gone east to learn how to upholster, of all things, caskets. He was going to be a casket upholsterer. His brother got the idea to start a store, mostly groceries and foods, on Summit Street. And he got the idea, but he didn't have enough money to rent the space for the store. So he wrote to his brother in the east and said, come back home, I've got an idea. Let's go into business and we'll start a store on Summit Street. Between them, they had around $300. <laughs> they rented the space and they probably got some farmers to uh, loan them, you might say, some food to sell. And then once they had a profit, then they could pay them back. And that's how they got going. Little by little, they had to expand the store. And so then every time they would build or they would go to a bigger store, they'd go one block north. This was the last block north right here. This was the Tidkey store we all remember. And of course, it was unique. The Tidkey brothers, they knew they had other stores to compete against, but they were unusual. They had food items, but then they also began offering other types of items, clothing, furniture, and uh, so this is what made Tidkey so unique. And then they had unusual ways of promoting their goods. One thing they started way back, and some of you may remember, every holiday season they would have a huge, round, a big wheel of Wisconsin cheddar cheese brought in and put plunked right there on a platform on the floor. And then people would come and they would kite not the public, but the helpers there, your clerks would cut wedges out of that huge circle of cheese, and by Christmas Day and New Year's, it was down to nothing. And the cheese at Tidkey's became a tradition. And uh, a lot of people, if they were entertaining and had company during the holidays, and they'd have some refreshments. They'd always have a wedge of cheese and a cutter at the table, and you could have some, along with crackers and cheese, uh, Tidkey's cheddar cheese at Christmas. Notice that they would have bargain days. They had, it was a real cut rate store because they had real bargains. I mean, I've looked at some of their uh, advertisements in the Blade from way back in the teens. My word, I mean, you get a pair of gloves for like 50 cents, a pair of shoes, they had women's shoes, men's shoes. The shoes were only maybe a couple dollars for a pair of shoes. Uh, of course, the days were different then, and the value of the dollar was different too. But look how they would always go all out and they would decorate and have banners and then one big one right across the street, Tidkey Bargain Days. They liked to do everything in a sensational way. They put funhouse mirrors in the store in the old days. 
That would keep the kids occupied, looking at themselves and how funny they looked in the mirrors so they wouldn't be nagging their parents, oh, come on, let's go home. <laughs> in other words, the idea was to make shopping here a family thing and to make it fun, something unique. They had times when there's a railroad track still today down on Water Street. They would bring a boxcar load of something in and they would have this sale item and they'd give you the carton in a carton right out of the boxcar down on that street. Uh, at times of the year when they allowed hunting buffalo out west, they would have in their meat department buffalo meat, if you wanted buffalo meat. <laughs> you never knew. They roasted their own coffee. And of course, Channel 30 has a wonderful program that I'm sure most of you have seen about the history of Tidkeys, and they interviewed some of the people that worked there. Well, anyway, uh, the part I liked was where Art Berry is sitting there, and then he says at the end, and I even have my suit I bought at Tidkeys, and he opens the lapel, <laughs> and there's the tag inside Tidkeys, his suit. That was neat. But um, Titkeys was an unusual store. People who had company from out of town, oh, you've got to see this store. It's so unusual. They'd take them down to see. They would roast the coffee right there in the store, not in a separate part of the store, sealed off from the rest. They wanted you to get the odor, the aroma. I shouldn't say odor, the aroma of the roasting coffee beans. And they actually had a fan that would blow the aroma through ductwork and blow the aroma around in the store. And you know, ooh, I've got to go and get some of that coffee before I go home. <laughs> that was the whole idea. With the profits the Tidkey brothers made here, they went into real estate. Not real estate around Toledo. They didn't want to compete with Toledo realtors. They went down around Orlando, Florida, way back in the early 20th century. And that became a very popular place for people to go and spend the winter. And they, they sold lots and they sold property down there in the Orlando area. Now, what, what became of Tidkeys? Well, Tidkeys. There was another store across the street you might remember was called the Fair. And um, a family in uh, Columbus, Kobackers, they had a major Columbus department store. They were interested in buying the store across the street from Tidkeys. And so what they did they came up to Toledo, the Kobacker brothers, and they wanted to meet with the owners of the store across the street. Well, as they walked along the street, they thought, wow, look at all the people going in and out of that store. How do you say that name? Titkey? Titkey, is it? <laughs> and they thought, maybe we're going to the wrong store. Well, they did go and they did buy the other store. But then they contacted the Tidke brothers and said, we'd like to talk to you if you're interested in selling your business. And the Tidkeys said, well, don't come over in our store because if our people see you in our store, they're going to get ideas that we might change hands and we don't want rumors to get started. And so they met in Charlie Tidke's backyard on Parkwood Avenue. And there they negotiated the sale. They sold everything, the property, the building, and the name with the store. And so it remained. Now, the Kobacker brothers realized if we would change the merchandising 
policies of the Tidke brothers, it would be a big mistake. We'll keep that cheese at Christmas. We'll keep these special big sales they call Tidke days. And we'll continue to do things the way the Tidkeys did it. Then what happened? After a number of years, federal department stores of Detroit bought Tidkeys from the Kobackers. And when they bought them, they thought, oh, all that silly nonsense. We're not going to sell stuff and act like a bunch of clowns. So they did away with the old days of merchandising that the Tidkeys had started. Well, that was the, the end <laughs> of Tidkeys. Because not only did that store go, they also went broke up in Detroit. <laughs> so anyway, that was the end of federal department stores and Tidkeys. So there we see it. Notice you had such crowds coming to the Tidkey sales that the police officer here has a pole and then one way it says green, it's painted green with go and then the other way it's painted red with stop and he blows his whistle and he turns that thing by hand. This was before traffic lights. This picture. Before traffic lights. And you'll notice the streetcar tracks. Notice the crowds on the sidewalk at Tidkey's going to the sale. Because a lot of people did come downtown by bus or community traction streetcars. And those were very much a common sight. Now, again, that's what that looks like today. <laughs> Pretty bare, isn't it? 